uh, Blumenbach discusses uh, the species concept in anthropology in connection with the question of monogenism or polygenism. And um, the main question he wants to discuss in this um, um, treatise on um, the natural variety of humankind is whether the natural diversity of man, of humans, can be traced to degeneration, as he calls it, or whether we have to conclude that there is just one or more than one original species of man. So the question is, in modern words, are different geographical uh, forms of mankind, we can observe, he has five varieties or races, can they, um, are they races, are they varieties uh, that originate by generation, degeneration, or are they original species? I question very much discussed in the 18th century. Now we have seen varieties uh, originate by degeneration, I will come to that later, but how do species arise in Blumenbach's theory? Of course, there's the, the traditional answer by Linnaeus, for example, that there are as many species as different forms were created in the beginning, whatever this is, when this is. Blumenbach um, has a slightly different <coughs> definition he actually tries to give a uh, natural explanation and he says species originate when the formative force, the building speed, is activated in so-called receptive organizable substances in nature. So species are different according to Blumenbach because the formative force has a different direction depending on the material of procreation, called the Zeugenstoff, it has different words for that, it acts on. So the difference originates from the material that so, uh, the building street is acting on, not from the building street as such. The cause of this formative force of the building street is unknown, and as we have heard yesterday, um, the study um, the merit of the, to study these forces like the building street is determining just the effects in more detail and bringing them back to general laws. So this is no causal explanation as I see it, but just a tool to better describe and maybe order uh, effects in nature. The formative force in biology is just a special form of formative forces that exist in nature. There are physical forces, according to Blumenbach, like attraction, of course, and there are formative, forming, forming forces, bildende Kräfte in uh, anorganic nature as well, that, for example, are um, the cause of crystallization. And there are vital forces, a number of them referred yesterday in Engelhardt's, in Engelhardt's uh, talk um, on that contractility and so on, and there is the formative force as one vital force that exists, one among several things. And its main effect is that it um, is special, innate, lifelong, and that it creates form in biology and to restore it. So the interesting thing is this vital force, so how do species originate? This vital formative force, the Bildungstrieb, is activated in so-called mature substance, substances in nature by external stimuli. So we have necessary preconditions, we have these um, organizable substances and we have um, external stimuli like heat, uh, physical forces. So he comes to the conclusion that all kinds of liquids obtain this formative force through a particular kind of fermentation or decay that takes place in certain places. This, of course, is an old idea from the 18th century. We find it in Diderot, for example. 
And the idea is that the previously raw unformed procreation material in this material, the special urge is awakened to um, then assume its form and to preserve it and so on. That's how species arise according to uh, Blumenbach. The formative force in this context has at least three functions or effects that can be attached to it. There is the origin of species we have talked about, uh, then the growth of the individual and the constancy of species in reproduction. So it has a wide range of effects. The first effect, I just want to go through these effects. The first effect is the origin of species, the original. We have heard that yesterday in the talk of Nadine, that there was a primitive world before and now, uh, before our world of today. This was um, destroyed by a fire. And then after the earth cooled down and the material took changed in, in, the, the, in the suitable way, then another uh, vegetation and creation could originate. Uh, when this material had then reached this, its uh, maturity, then we had the same, probably the same material forces, natural forces that came in. Uh, and since the material has changed from the first world to the second world, that's uh, the cause why the Wilhelm Street has a little different direction, and so the species have changed as well. So the main reason why the, the, the flora and fauna of today is different from that of the primitive world is that the material has changed, not that the Wilhelm Street has changed. And the second I can go through that quite uh, uh, fast. Faster is the formation of the individual. That's how the Bildungsstil originally um, was um, introduced by, by Blumenbach. And they were, again, external uh, stimuli, the heat, and it's, um, we have the growth and giving form to that. So if I understand Blumenbach right, there is no real difference between the origin of species Spontaneous, spontaneous generation and the reproduction of the individual. Uh, no fundamental difference. The, and he writes that, for example, reproduction is a quasi repeated creation. It's very similar. And the origin, there is just one difference the origin of species, the original and spontaneous generation. Then the material appropriation arises from the direct nation, uh, action of, uh, of uh, forces of nature. And in the case of reproduction, this uh, material is mediated through the physiology of the parents. That is the difference. And the third effect is of the um, see that the um, species remain constant as he is. Same form and habitus is generated over generations, and this is uh, what makes uh, is the prerequisite for something as the natural system, because the species remain constant. As you see here in the table of Linnaeus, we can um, uh, define a or find a natural system in nature with defined species. So these species are constant, but they can be modified to Blumenbach. The form and it modifies uh, in so far as the formative force can deviate in uh, different directions. And the, the another publication talks four ways, but this is not such important. So there we have the, the production of monsters. We have hybrid generation and what is um, most interesting in our connection is degeneration into variety. So when the formative force deviates, we get de degeneration into varieties. The causes that are short of degenerations are external forces again, climate, food, mode of life, <coughs> where these forces, these causes, these external um, uh, circumstances act for a long time, then the formative force that we can can be diverted 
and so-called varieties um, come into existence. When we come back to his original question to discriminate between species and variety, how can we do that? And basically um, prove that there is only one species of mankind. That's Dumbledore's uh, main idea. And we go back to the formula to drive, we see that it's not really helpful. If you see species are different directions of the formative force, verschiedene Richtungen, varieties are deviations, Ablenkungen, Abweichungen, which is very unclear what is the difference for me. I, maybe you have another idea, but I don't see actually uh, a real difference between these kind of um, definitions, how varieties or species originate. So the point is that the formative force does not really help to define what are species and varieties. It's actually useless in this connection. So Blumenbach has to resort to another kind of definition and he just goes back to the um, definitions um, that were present at his time that comes from Kant or uh, Buffon and uh, go to back to other criteria like fertility. Kant has discussed that it's called Blumenbach's Buffon's rule. Rule, what is a species? Animals that generate between that fertile young, whatever the difference in bodily form. So the similarity does not take, has not any um, relevance in this case, belong to one of the same physical species, fertility. Blumenbach now criticizes this definition, not, not because he, he thinks it's not true, but he thinks it's not operable. You can't take it, uh, put it into use in anthropology. There's one thing in domestic animals, because of the way of life, um, it's um, um, this character seems of the building steps, uh, the, the definition of fertility seems ambiguous and uncertain. And for Blumenbach, humans are the domestic animal as such. So we are domestic animals. And for, that, for uh, because of that, it's un unclear. And that in, in the wild, how can you bring animals to this test of uh, population, as he calls it? How can we uh, say if the the Asian elephant and the African elephant are of one species or not, then we have to bring an, an Asian elephant to Africa. And at that time, it seemed to be difficult to other animals. So it's very hard in nature and it requires experimental proof. This is an experimental criterion. And uh, so the test of copulation in the context of anthropology has to be applied to the geographical populations of mankind. <clears throat> Though this took place, as we all know, um, after the, the discovery of the different continent, uh, there's a sort of uh, something you could observe. The Europeans came to um, America, Australia, and wherever, and they made this test of population, and it obviously worked. So the, the uh, varieties that exist today are obviously uh, one species. But, and this is more, uh, this is what, what uh, is the real problem, it has also applied to humans and apes. So to know if humans and chimpanzees, for example, are one species or different species, we have to make the test of copulation. And this is something Blumenbach does not want to do. He says there are horrid stories of the union of man with brutes, as he calls them. But he says we have never known any instance related on any such collection in food for and has ever been an hybrid being produced by the horrid union of bees and man. So this is more an aesthetic um, uh, argument, but not a natural historian. <clears throat> by the way, this horrid union, of course, was uh, intended in 1920s by a Russian. Soviet uh, biologists, for example, and I've read that in the, uh, a couple of years ago in China, 
they try to uh, uh, produce by cloning uh, 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 a hybrid between humans and chimpanzees. Well, if this doesn't work, how can we go on? And then the second question is similarity. We have to resort to similarity. And then uh, this is actually what uh, Umbach uh, suggests. We have to look at the similarity, like the, these are not quite dissimilar, so we can assume they are species and uh, human races are much more similar, so we can assume that they are just varieties. So we have two different kinds of differences. Species has uh, separate origin, origins. They have major differences and they have, as we see, this different direction of force varieties. He's talking about these five varieties mainly have a common origin, minor differences, and they come from each generation. I want to go just very shortly through his criteria between uh, humans and other um, the animals and uh, monkeys or apes. In this case, we have uh, bodily uh, differences. And uh, interestingly, he has a, a short list of how uh, the female, the human female differs from the female um, ape. And this um, suggests that females have are more different, human females are more different from chimpanzee females than men are different from male chimpanzees. So we males are more closely, more similar to uh, apes than our females. So then there are mental faculties, instinct, further characteristics, I don't want to go into that. It's quite interesting how he says how humans differ from other animals, apes. And the differences between the varieties or races of men are much smaller. It's just color and uh, the form of the face and uh, the form of other body parts and so on. So this formative uh, force has different directions as we've seen in the different species. It can change to uh, degeneration. So we could ask, is there a, a limit to this change, deviation of the formative force through external uh, forces and can we come to evolution in this, uh, uh, in this uh, theory of the human path? This, uh, um, there was a, uh, this theory was promoted by Buffon, for example, and, um, 50 years or 40 years before that, or 30 years before that. And Buffon came to the uh, question, uh, to the answer that this might actually be uh, the case. And he writes, if one admits that the, um, the S is of the force family, and it differs only because it has generated, we could say that each family of animals and of plants had only one single ancestor, and that even all animals came from one single animal, uh, which over time produced all the races by degenerating. So the idea, the, the idea that through degeneration we could get to what we call evolution was present at that time. How does uh, Blumenbach deal with this, deal with this question? Um, he, oops, no. he, I think he uh, does not think this is viable. Reform, by the way, as well. Uh, uh, he says this is just a speculation, probably not true. Um, and Blumenbach thinks that these div deviations of the building speed of the formative force cannot produce new species. I have no, not found any citation explicitly uh, talking about that, that he says the formative force cannot go, cannot produce new species. But, um, in connection with hybridization, he says, according to a vice law of nature, limitless confusion of spe specific form is prevented. And my idea is that he um, uh, has a, a similar idea about um, evolution and um, the production of new species by the generation. So what actually is then, at least in this context, the form to force, we have seen that it's not very helpful actually defining 
or, or uh, saying if uh, uh, there are species or varieties in humans and um, could it little uh, make it a strong point um, it's probably not much more than just a word for something he doesn't know he admits that and it has a rough, reminded me of the famous uh, words of Weigert in Faust, where he writes, right. Dann eben, wo die Begriffe fehlen, da stellt ein Wort zur rechten Zeit sich ein. Mit Worten lässt sich trefflich streiten, mit Worten ein System bereiten, an Worte lässt sich trefflich glauben, von einem Wort lässt sich kein Jota rauben. My impression actually is that the Bildungsreformative drive and this connection is just a label, a word that does not really help. Um, to solve the problems he has, he wants to solve, and he basically resorts to observation and can solve it through observation in a way that we would find satisfactory. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>